Hello, and here is the walkthrough for some of the problems in our quiz chapter seven quiz review. Be sure to complete this, show all of your work, avoid using my answer key as much as possible. And uh, if you do have any extra questions, please ask. If you do finish this early, I encourage you to go through the practice packet and finish any complete any problems we did not complete as a class. So with that said, let's jump straight into it. Something like root of 12 can be simplified or broken down to root of four times root of three. And we know what the root of four is. That is two. So that's how we get two root three. Okay. Something like this follows the same idea, except this has an x squared. And we know that, well, let's break, out, break down the 50 and the, um, break down the 51st. That could be broken down into 25 and 2. And 25 is a perfect root. But we, what, how, do we, how does this x squared work? Well, we, anytime you square root a squared, they actually cancel each other out. And that's how you get the x. So if you pull, bring this in, I like personally like to organize this into two categories. The red that I'm going to highlight are things that could be square rooted. Right, 25 breaks down to 5. x squared breaks down to just x, and that is good. And then the second value, or the second group, or the second radical is values that cannot be square rooted, and they all just stay the same. So that's how we end up with 5x root 2. Okay, I'm going to leave c and d um, so you can figure that out. Um, here... Number two, specifically, A, you should be able to do on your own, but B in particular is a little bit strange because um, if you remember when you cross multiply, this has to have parentheses. Any Anytime you have addition or subtraction in the numerator or denominator of a rational value of a fraction, that should have a parentheses, especially if it is a proportion problem, which these are. So when you cross multiply this, this is really 8 times m minus 8. So that's how you get 8m minus 64. The rest of the work is there. You should be able to do that. Here, number, uh, letter C, this is very, very important. When you cross multiply, y times y is y squared. So we have 5y squared is equal to 125 times 16 is uh, ba -bum, so 2,000. And we need to get y by itself. So we divide both sides by 5. y squared is now equal to 400. And this is why we have a plus minus. Because anytime you square root something in an equation, it creates two answers. In other words, anytime you, ooh, in anytime you have a... Where is it? Yeah, there you go. Anytime you have an exponent. Whatever that exponent is tells you how many answers you should have. In this case, we should have two answers because the exponent is to the power of 2. So that's why we have a plus 20 and a minus 20. A positive 20 and a negative 20 are both answers to this particular problem. Okay, and then D, you should cross multiply this. And just like we mentioned before, anytime you have a plus or minus in the numerator or denominator, you should put parentheses around it. So in reality, we have x times x plus 1 is equal to 5 times 6 is 30. Distributing this in properly, you should x squared plus 1x is equal to 30 minus 30 minus 30. And this just becomes a factoring problem. So we Piggybacking off what we talked about two seconds ago about exponents, since this has an exponent of 2, that means we should have two answers, which we see in our answer key. And since this is quadratic, it would be best if we make one side equal to 0, so we could use the zero product property, and we could factor this. Two factors of negative 30 and a positive 1 that multiplied to negative 30, that is, and adds up to a positive 1, is a uh, positive 6 and negative 5. So this, these two groups are x plus 6 and x minus 5. And then once, uh, once you realize that, 
the rest of it should be straightforward. x plus 6 is equal to 0. x is equal to negative 6. x minus 5 is equal to 0. x is equal to 5. Okay. Solve for x for 3. Now, this is a proportion problem. These are, in fact, similar to each other, as we see here. And if you notice, PR is given, P and R is given, and that should be corresponding to AM. So what I'm going to do is, as always, I've always done left to right. And we go, go PR, which is, has a length of 8, over AM. AM has a length of 12. I'm going to set that equal to, and the other piece that is given here is x. We need to solve for x, right? So looking at this, pd, and that should be corresponding to wm. So pd is a value of x, wm has a length of 9, and here we just cross multiply and solve for x. This is from here on straightforward. I'm not going to finish this one up. Here it says determine the scale factor of the similar polygons. And if you notice, from left to right, there are two answers to this, from 5 to 10, and that works because these are the corresponding parts. It's between 4 and 1, 4 and 1. We could write that scale factor 5 to 10. 5 over 10 is equal to 1 half, which is how you get this answer. Or if you do this from left to right, this becomes 10 over 5, which is equal to 2 over 1, and that's how you get the other scale factor. Both are technically correct, and you, that's how, I mean, that's pretty much how you would find any scale factor for any particular problem. 5 gives you a scale factor, and it's asking you now to solve for all the missing pieces. So... What I like to do, how I like to think about this is for every two, let's say, dollars that you make, I make three dollars. In other words, if I had four dollars here, this would have not, not eight dollars, but six dollars because two to three and then four to six. They all, they both have the same ratio. Two over three four over six and it, they equal each other okay the same thing actually happens here but we have different values so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fill in all of this information a b has a value of eight b c has a value of 12 c d 14 and then a d is 18 and if you notice since it is a two to three that means everything here from left to right should get bigger so in this particular case, we're going to use our scale factor, scale factor, oops, scale factor, and I'm going to put in parentheses left to right, and we're going to use that and set it equal to 8 over PQ. If you want to use a variable, you absolutely could, just make sure you don't use the same variable over and over. I would use, personally use WXYZ. But for the sake of it, let's just use x really quick. And then let's do some cross multiplying. 8 times 3, 24. 2 times x is 2x. Divide by 2. And then x is equal to 12. That means pq is equal to 12. And you could, you could, you could do all of this using only the scale factor here. It's very useful. Okay. Uh, this last one I'm just going to set up also. It's very important that you actually solve for x first, and the only way to do that is to use our similarity statement. Similarity statement here says that kj, which is actually given, is corresponding to nm. So from left to right, I'm going to write that ratio up, 16 over 4. That is going to simplify in a second. Uh, let me finish this proportion. We also have JL, which is proportional to ML. And we could write that from left to right as well. 
x plus 18 over x minus 3. Now, to make this a lot easier on ourselves, let's actually simplify this. 16 over 4 simplifies to 4 over 1. And then from here, we could actually cross multiply properly. Remember what we learned in, our, in on that first page? Anytime you have addition or subtraction, you should put parentheses around them. And from there, distribute properly, and you should be able to get that x is equal to 10. Okay? The rest of the work is shown and given just in case you were getting a little bit overwhelmed with it. But you are expected to, to know and be able to complete all these problems without hiccups on your quiz. Okay? If you do have any questions, please ask. And once again, if you do finish early, go through that practice packet. All right? If you have any questions, like I said, email me, let me know. Our quiz is coming up.